Hey guys, so in today's video I'm going to be looking at Dying Light. Just like my other review videos, this video will also look at the game's achievements, the easy ones, hardest ones, um, and how easy the game is to 100% complete. Um, unlike the Metro Exodus video, I'm not going to keep in the game sale figures and profits. I think people found that very boring on the last one, so I just decided to completely remove it. Um, if you do miss it, for whatever reason, um, I can put it back, just let me know in the comments below. And um, without further ado, let's get into Dying Light. So we'll look at the story first, because I figured that'd be a good place to start. So in the fictional Middle Eastern city of Haran, a mysterious viral outbreak has turned most of the population into hyper-aggressive zombie-like creatures forcing Haran's Defence Ministry to quarantine parts of the city. The Global Relief Effort, or GRE, assists survivors still trapped in the city by regularly airdropping supplies. Players assume the role of Kyle Crane, an undercover GRE operative sent to infiltrate the quarantine zone to find Kadia Rice Suleiman, a political figure gone rogue who has a file that could be vital data on the virus, which could potentially lead to a cure. When Crane arrives, he must decide between completing his mission or helping the survivors. Undercover GRE agent Kyle Crane is airdropped into Haran to retrieve a sensitive file stolen by Kadir Suleiman, who is using it for blackmail. Crane is bitten by an infected, though he is rescued by Jade Aldemir and taken to a survivor sanctuary inside a skyscraper called the Tower. Crane is introduced to Rahim Aldemir, Jade's younger brother, who then teaches him the basics of parkour. Crane learns that the tower is being harassed by a gang of bandits led by a warlord named Rice, who steals and hoards supplies from the GRE airdrops. This includes Antizin, a drug that slows the process of infection and suppresses its symptoms. Crane is tasked with reaching an airdrop containing the direly needed Antizin, but the GRE instructs him to destroy the airdrop and instead buy the drug from Rice in order to confirm his identity. Crane reluctantly complies and lies to the tower that the supplies have actually been looted. Upset, Tower leader Harris Breton tasks Crane with negotiating a deal with Rice. Upon meeting Rice, Crane is able to confirm that he is indeed Suleiman. Crane carries out a series of unethical tasks for Rice under the assumption that he will be rewarded with two crates of Antizin, but Rice betrays him by only giving him five vials. He later severs relations with the GRE when they halt the supply drops and refuses to help the Tower. Desperate to obtain Antizin, Crane and Jade raid Rice's storage facility but they instead find a cache of plastic explosives. Rahim attempts to use the explosives to bomb a volatile nest, despite Crane's objection. Rahim is wounded, and Crane executes Rahim's plan and destroys all the infected in the nest. However, when he returns, he discovers Rahim was actually bitten and has turned into infected while Crane was gone, forcing Crane to kill him. Meanwhile, scientist at the tower named Dr. Imran Zer, or Zero, who has attempted to develop a cure for the virus, is kidnapped by Rice. Crane attempts a rescue, but is also captured. Rice reveals that the fire he stole contains proof that the GRE intends to weaponize the virus rather than develop a cure. In the process of escaping, Crane cuts off Rice's hand. Dr. Zare is killed after telling Crane that he had tasked Jade with delivering his research to scientist Dr. Alan Camden. As Crane searches for Jade, he learns that the Defense Ministry is planning to firebomb her on in an effort to eradicate the outbreak, claiming that there are no survivors. Working with the Embers, a survivor group in Old Town, Crane tries to alert the outside world by setting off bombs in an apartment building in the pattern of a sad face, but a jet just fires a missile which obscures the pattern. Crane then reactivates a radio tower and successfully alerts the outside world of survivors in Iran, thwarting the Ministry's plan. In a desperate effort to evade scandals, the GRE contacts Crane to retrieve Dr. Z's research for them so they can convince the public they are working on the cure in exchange they will extract him safely from Iran. Jade is captured by Rice, who steals Dr. Zare's research. Crane begins to succumb to the virus as he searches for Jade at a museum. When he reaches her, he finds that she was also bitten and will soon turn into an infected. Watching from a distance, Rice offers Crane one dose of antizin to save either himself or Jade. Jade sacrifices herself, injecting Crane at the last minute, and protects Crane from Rice's men. Jade then succumbs to the infection and turns, forcing Crane to kill her. After killing Rice's second in command, Crane delivers the tissue samples to Dr. Camden, who believes that he is close to developing a cure but needs the rest of Dr. Zare's data. 
Crane discovers that Rice has given Dr. Zez research to the GRE in exchange for extraction from Haran. Crane assaults Rice's headquarters and battles him atop a skyscraper just as a GRE helicopter appears. Crane throws Rice off the building and narrowly recovers the research data. He decides to give it to Dr. Camden and Stacy and Haran to help the remaining survivors. So, to me, the story in Dying Light is actually pretty weak. Um, the story works as like a very easy, simple vessel for the gameplay, but it could have been far more fleshed out. Um, but, you know, Crane is a pretty boring protagonist. Um, he gets the job done. You know, he's not really that interested in, he's kind of a nobody. The only thing we really learn about him is that he is from Chicago because at one point um, Kareem calls him Al Capone, you know, asking him where he's from. So that's the only bit of backstory we ever get is that he's from Chicago. Uh, Jade's interesting. I wish they'd explored her backstory a little more because it's referenced a few times that she's some sort of fighting champion known as the Scorpion. And there's posters around if you look for them that actually are Jade Aldemir and she was like... Um, almost like an MMA fighter or something, but that's like all we get. Brecken, um, I actually like Brecken's character. Uh, you know, he's in Haran at the wrong time, training kids to do parkour when the virus hits, and he, you know, pretty much lost all the students. Um, and yeah, I feel like he doesn't get enough screen time. He's the leader of the tower, yet he does nothing at all um, except give current orders. And I feel like a few missions with Brecken actually physically going with the player could have been cool, especially if he had been this like master parkourist who could show the player what they should be leveling up towards. Um, he could be really setting the example of like, yeah, you know, this is where you're at now, but this is where you could be by the end of the game, and this is all the cool shit you can do. But we didn't get that. Um, Raheem found him really irritating and really annoying. Um, his death didn't phase me or bother me at all, to be honest, and it was kind of predictable. I just didn't like him. He was this really irritating teenager that just kept having outbursts and was one minute happy and then one minute pissed off. And it, his character just really didn't work for me. Um, Kareem is pretty cool. One of Rice's henchmen who was betrayed and killed at the end of the game. He isn't inherently a bad guy. He's just trying to make the best of a bad situation. Um, and of course he ends up with Rice. Personality is pretty funny. And he's actually one of my favorite characters. Uh, the GRE woman, who you radio throughout the game, is boring, uh, annoying, and bland. And I think the only character I dislike more than her is Raheem. Um, and I'd say the GRE as a whole, um, they're not very... You know, like some of the stuff that Crane does for them doesn't make sense. Like, when they ask they ask him to burn the vials of Actizen the first time he goes on a night run. And it's like, well, no, why didn't we just steal it? Because Rice is going to want it. So if we steal it and we get it back to the tower, they get Arctis in and Rice gets pissed off then because we stole it because it's he wants it. Which would have forced an interaction instead of burn it and go buy it off him. Like it's really annoying uh, that the entire game, Crane is kind of this one, I don't know, like he just does what he's told. He's like a dog. Like there's parts in the game where Rice will goad him and be like, you know, you can't make decisions for yourself. And he's kind of right, like, you know. I'm kind of glad in a way that Dying Light 2 decided to actually give the player dialogue options because Crane is just really annoying sometimes and the GRE are just really uninteresting, to be honest. Like, she, the woman on the radio just is so blech. Um, and finally, Rice, main villain. So he didn't do it for me. Um, I'll be honest, he looks the part, you know, the suit, the tattoos, the fact he gets his arm cut off, the voice acting is pretty good. He looks like a villain, he talks like a villain, but he, you know, he only did a couple of bad things. Like, you know, he kills his own men, he extorts survivors, he cuts off a guy's arm, and that was it. So, I want to I wanna compare. For example, take Vars from Far Cry 3. Vars shows up multiple times in that game himself to try and kill Jason. Um, a good example is when he is in an armoured convoy, Jason opens the back, Rice is there with a pistol, uh, Vars is there with a pistol, and you wake up and you've got 
concrete slabs tied to your feet and he kicks you into a lake to drown. You know there's another one where Jason has to climb out of a pile of bodies. So Fast actually does things. He actually actively tries to kill you. Rice does nothing except for when he throws you in his arena and then also the shit he does at the end of the game. That's it. If he'd had more screen time and done more bad guy stuff on screen, he would have been a much more interesting and convincing villain. Like if he he sent men after you. Like if he at least tried to stop you, slow you down. Um, you know, maybe if he set traps across the city to try and get Crane cornered by infected. Um, like the only cool thing he really does is the arena. And that only happens once and that's it. You know, the shock and awe of that isn't going to work a second time round. But it would have been cool if we'd had, like, randomised, like, you know, Rice is sending men after you. Like, if a bunch of thugs turned up and they were like, oh yeah, you know, Rice wants to go on or something. But we never get that. And, you know, I don't expect himself to come up because I can't see Rice being this, like, parkour guy. So he probably would die. But, like, his men, like, they're expendable to him. We, we see that. And he has so many of them, like, why doesn't he send them after us? It just seems like a really big missed opportunity for him to do more stuff as a villain, and he doesn't do it. Now that we've spoken about the story and the setting, it's time to get into the gameplay. So I'm going to split the gameplay into two parts, the combat and the parkour. Dying Light's bread and butter. So we'll start with the parkour. Um, flow of the parkour is near perfect. Running from building to building, keeping your momentum going, making huge leaps across buildings is so much fun and feels amazing. Climbing vertically though can feel slow at times, but I can't really criticise the game for that because realistically how fast you're going to climb upwards. Um, jumping from super high buildings and landing on trash bags is also extremely fun. Doesn't really make sense, but neither to haystacks in Assassin's Creed, so it's fine. Um, we're introduced to parkour early on in the game. Raheem teaches the player the basics of parkour, climbing, keeping momentum, and jumping from high places. Leveling up your parkour skill level and unlocking new parkour skills is awesome. You can jump over zombies, give yourself extra height, you can unlock unlimited stamina to never stop running, um, makes the parkour feel even better, you can unlock a dropkick skill, and believe me, dropkicking zombies off of rooftops will never ever get old. There's a reason they brought that back in Dying Light 2. There's a multitude of other agility skills available in the game, and you'll love unlocking them. Um, other than that, can't really say much about the parkour. It feels great, it's super fun, and it never gets old. Now the combat. Combat in this game is also really good. Getting new weapons and upgrading them with different effects is super fun, and experimenting with the different effects to kill zombies is very cool. You can modify weapons in different ways, from having a flaming sword, to an electric sickle, to having a flaming and electric sword. There are also more basic upgrades that just increase a weapon's base damage or improve a weapon's durability. Fighting the zombies is really fun too. Hitting weak points and having the game slow down to show what bones have been broken or what limbs have been cut off just adds to the fun and makes you feel so badass. Um, and I also like that a weapon only has so many repairs before it is completely broken and effective. This encourages the player to use a multitude of different weapons, meaning you'll more than likely use most of the game's weapon sandbox, giving you a more rounded experience. Of course, just like the parkour and its agility skill tree, there is also a power skill tree for combat. You can unlock a variety of different combat skills in this game. Some good examples are takedowns, which allow you to silently kill a zombie from behind. You can unlock the ability to throw your current weapon at enemies. You can unlock the ability to swing a two-handed weapon around yourself to fling zombies away from yourself, or even a ground pound attack to slam into enemies from above. From above. The only criticism I do have with the combat is ranged weapons like guns or crossbows. They feel really clunky to use and they're also super overpowered. Sure they make a lot of noise drawing virals to your locations which is a negative but they make combat too easy. They're almost always unnecessary when it comes to infected enemies and even human enemies they just don't feel like they're needed. Like if I can walk up to someone with a double bar shotgun and they have a machete I'm gonna kill them immediately. Um, if I kill an infected and a bunch of virals come after me, I'm going to kill them immediately because it's a really overpowered gun. I understand that enemies in the game have them, so it was only fair that the player was able to have access because there are sections where enemies do have guns and they'll kill you very quickly. So if you didn't have them and only made weapons, you wouldn't be able to do it. 
But honestly, if it comes to zombies, I would just say use melee weapons because you just have more fun. Speaking of the enemies, um, Dying Light has a decent variety of enemy types. Not loads, but there's enough here to keep things interesting. So we'll start with the basic infected. These are literally just your regular run-of-the-mill zombies. Slow, easy to deal with, but dangerous in groups. Hazmat zombies are a spin on the regular infected. They take more damage because of their hazmat suits, and also the red tank on their back can be shot or attacked to make it explode, which is incredibly fun, although it draws virals. Speaking of virals, um, virals are recently turned infected, still partially human. They can run, jump, climb buildings, and they attack faster and more viciously, and can even dodge your attacks. If you listen carefully sometimes, you can actually hear virals speaking, um, like, like pleading, like saying no would bring, because it's someone who is, is almost infected. Like, they're past the point of saving, but there's still part of them in there that doesn't want what's happening to happen. It's quite horrifying, really. Goons are bigger infected, usually equipped with a rebar or a huge chunk of stone or something like that. Um, they're very slow, but they hit hard. You can't miss them. Toads are infected that spit toxic goo at you from a distance. Uh, they can get annoying, but aren't too hard to deal with. Boomers are zombies that run at you and explode. They can instantly kill you. They aren't fun. Well, they are fun. But, I hate them. Both are special infected that only come out at night. Um, you need these guys for bulk the tissue. So, for the story, um, for specific upgrades. And also, bulk the tissue is worth a lot. So, if you wanted to like grind out money, that would be a good way to do it. Um, they run from you. They don't attack. But, the problem is, their feeding grounds are usually guarded by volatiles. And also, they can call volatiles to help them. So, and finally, we have the Volatiles. Full mutation of the infected that only comes out at night. Uh, these beasts can keep pace with you, will hunt you relentlessly, are a lot harder to kill, dodge attacks, deal more damage, jump on top of you and start slapping the shit out of you while you spam A to get them off. You know, you get the idea. They, these are the big leaks. These things don't stop. And then, of course, we have the human enemies or rise men. They can use melee weapons, they can dodge use throwing weapons, and also guns. Your typical zombie apocalypse thug bandit dudes. Dying Light has two separate leveling up systems. The parkour and the combat, and also then there's a third, which is survivor, and then after all the levels, there's legend. Um, so you gain XP for parkour for literally any parkour you do, and you gain XP for combat for fighting enemies. This basically means that no matter what, you'll always be earning XP to level up and get new skills. You don't have to play side quests necessarily to level up. You can, but you don't have to. Earning XP and getting new skills is definitely necessary to your survival in Dying Light. You can increase your stamina, learn new combat skills, even unlock a grappling hook to scale buildings a lot faster. Leveling up in Dying Light is incredibly satisfying. Once you've earned all the skills you need, you can then unlock legend levels. Legend levels are status bonuses that you earn over time. You earn them more slowly than the original skills, and you can earn them faster by playing on harder difficulties. It can come across as a grind, but thankfully there are no achievements tied to the legend levels, and they just add to replayability. My friend that helped me get gameplay, Josh, um, who you can find on Instagram as uh, Tutu Tachanka, literally grinded the same quarantine zone over and over, but then you can switch the difficulty to Nightmare, and then give in the requisition packs you got. But they're worth as much as they would be on Nightmare. So he kind of cheated the game and now he's legend level 95. Which is ridiculous. I'm legend level 11 from playing naturally. So that's just to give you an idea of how bad the grind is. Now the achievements. The achievements in Dying Light are mostly your standard thing. Craft X amount of items, kill X amount of enemies. These are all pretty easy. It's just by playing the game you'll unlock most of these achievements. There are some specific ones, but honestly, even a casual gamer could get a good 85% or so of the achievements. Easiest achievement definitely goes to, is it really necessary, which is unlocked for killing your first infected, which is a part of the story, so you literally can't miss it. The hardest achievement in the game, in my opinion, goes to GT Parkour Instructor, which is unlocked by completing all parkour fever challenges at night. These parkour fever challenges are difficult anyway. Um, but at night when it's harder to see and there are volatiles everywhere, it becomes even more difficult. 
Um, you can only really afford to make one or maybe two mistakes before you know your run is going to fail. So you really need to be comfortable with how the parkour in the game works. You need to be able to trust your movement. You absolutely need to keep your momentum. Some jumps are literally impossible to make and you'll almost definitely fail the challenge. You also can't use the grappling hook or you will immediately fail. So I'd not advise attempting this achievement until you've completely maxed out the agility skill tree and possibly even the power skill tree too, just in case any enemies get in your way during the challenge. With this achievement, I got really lucky as there was an event running where fall damage was turned off completely. So if I did mess up during the run, there was more of a chance I could salvage it rather than restarting the run completely. I would also recommend doing this achievement in one sitting, as the game does not tell you which challenges you've done. I've made this mistake, so I'd half started it, I came back to it, and then I had to start figuring out which ones I'd done and which ones I haven't done, which was very frustrating. I say an honourable mention is It's All in the Writing, which is unlocked by finding all text collectibles. Isn't exactly hard, but it's definitely tedious. Ultimately though, I decided to give the hardest achievement to GD Parkour Instructor. It was a nightmare. My own completion currently sits at 95%. My remaining achievements are tied to the Bozak Hold, one of the DLCs in the game. I'm hoping to get these achievements done soon. Um, speaking of the DLCs, if you'd like me to cover them, um, let me know in the comments below. I can cover both of them in one video, or I can do them separately. I can do one for the following and one for the bones I called, although I probably would just put them into one. And one point I'd like to just add on before I end the video about Dying Light is how great Techland are at supporting the game. Even now, with Dying Light 2 being out, they're still hosting events on the original game. A friend and I were playing just the other day and the Super Crane event was active, so we had infinite grapple hooks and there was no fall damage. And what's even better is that if you want to just play the game and it's not on the stage, you can turn the events on or off. And I just think this goes to show how much love and care they put into their game, and to still be supporting it now, even when they've released a sequel, is just brilliant. Like, as a, as a developer, that's very good. Like, for players, like, that is admirable, especially when you've released the sequel, where you could just ditch the game. Like... Overwatch 2. A lot of people are talking about that at the moment, um, and that's a good comparison. They've completely abandoned the first game, and now the first game is the second game. It just is. But Dying Light are like, well, yeah, we've had a sequel out, and we want you to play it, but if you can't afford it right now, or you just don't want to buy it, and you like the first game, that's fine. We'll keep the events going. Like, we want, they won't take that away. I'd love to see COD take this approach or something. Like, it really works. It makes the players feel valued. Like, yeah, you care about the game. You care about me having fun. And that about wraps up my Dying Light review. Um, I know I didn't cover the following or the Bolzac Hold, um, but like I said, they are DLCs. Um, and I just would rather focus on the main game first and do those afterwards if people want me to. Um, I'm definitely going to get Dying Light 2 at some point, and I definitely want to make a video on it. I don't know when, but I, I will eventually make a video because I want to. Um, it looks great, and it, if it builds upon what the first game is, then great. That's exactly what I want. Um, let me know. If I should keep the easiest and hardest achievement section, I think that kind of get, lets you all know what kind of achievements you'll be in for, should you play this game yourself. Um, and also let me know if I should leave the sales numbers and profit section out to future videos, because I really generally don't think anyone cares about that shit. Um, and also, um, the story. Should I leave that bit out? Should I, like, I feel like if people, most people will know the story, but I always feel like if there's, a, if there's a couple of people that don't, like it's good for me to give them like the full rundown. But at the same time, I can see why me talking about the game story for five minutes would get really boring. So if you want me to keep it out of future videos, that's fine. I can just give my own like very short version of it. I can just get like a really like bullet point, like one to two minute version instead of like a full five minute summary. And that's fine. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed. Um, as anyways, any feedback on the video is much appreciated, um, especially on the audio. This is a new Blue Yeti mic. I'm getting used to it. It's really weird hearing my own voice come back to me as I'm recording, but it's also kind of handy because I can hear how fast I'm speaking. I'm hoping I've managed to slow down a bit this video and take more pauses. I'm still working on it though, but it's a new mic, so please bear with me because I think the settings are okay. It's just my room. Because I'm am because i in an attic, the sound kind of reverberates a bit. Um, so, and I also need to, like, work on keeping my voice at a level of volume. But 
let me know how the audio is this time around. I'm hoping this is a lot better than my first video and you'll actually be able to hear me a lot better. Um, and I'm just hoping the audio is a bit clearer. It's not going to be perfect. No way. But I'm just kind of hoping it's better. So um, if you're going to leave a comment, can you at least do me a favor and just let me know about the audio? Because I really need to know that shit. Um, and let me know what you think of Dying Light if you have played it. Do you agree with my review? Do you disagree? Uh, did I miss something? If you want to let me know in the comments, we can have a discussion. And um, before you all go, typical YouTube stuff, just if you like the video, then leave a like. Um, if you want to see more stuff from me, then subscribe. And if you do, make sure to turn on notifications. Otherwise, you'll miss my newest videos. And um, yeah, that's about it really, guys. I think that's everything. So much love, and I'll uh, see you next time.